and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu did not travel to Moscow today for his pre-scheduled meeting with President Vladimir Putin amid domestic political turmoil ahead of Israel's April 9th elections. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif accuses Israel of engaging in adventurism with regard to its military operations that are directed against Iranian forces in Syria, warning that he could not rule out the possibility of a military conflagration between the two countries. The United Nations Special Coordinator for Middle East Peace, Nikolai Mladenov, warns that extremists were on the rise once again and that the risk of war between Israel and the Palestinians continues to loom large. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu did not travel to Moscow today for his pre-scheduled meeting with President Vladimir Putin, despite the Israeli leader's assertion last week in which he emphasized the importance of the meeting with the Russian leader to Israel's national security. A senior Israeli official who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity said that both sides have agreed that the meeting scheduled for today between Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu and President Vladimir Putin will be postponed for several days. The official noted, however, that the two leaders held a phone call this morning and that a new date for the meeting will be determined as soon as possible. The work meeting between Netanyahu and Putin, which was supposed to be the first since Syrian air defenses shot down a Russian plane during an Israeli operation against Iranian targets in Syria, was meant to have been about bolstering the presiding coordinated mechanism between the Russian and Israeli militaries, which aims to assure deconfliction during Israeli military engagements in its northern neighbor Syria. All of the preparations for the meeting had already been completed. A delegation from Israel's National Security Council had already traveled to Moscow ahead of the Prime Minister's arrival. To coordinate the details, the Prime Minister's bureau had already chartered a plane and everyone was waiting for the departure, which was scheduled for today. But yesterday, the decision to postpone the meeting was made. When TV7 asked a senior Israeli official about the reason for postponing the meeting, which Prime Minister Netanyahu insisted last week aimed to discuss issues of the utmost importance, the official refused to elaborate. Nevertheless, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bogdanov revealed that it was Netanyahu who had asked to postpone the trip due to political developments in Israel. The Russian diplomat said that the Prime Minister needs to be in Israel at the current juncture in time to solve several problems that are related to the nearing Israeli elections. According to reports that were confirmed to TV7 by several politicians in Israel, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu is preoccupied at this moment with significant developments in the country's political arena. The Prime Minister's main rival, former IDF Chief of Staff Benny Gantz, who heads the Israeli Resilience Party, announced this morning that he had signed an agreement with Chairman of the Yesh Atid faction, former Finance Minister Yair Lapid, in which both leaders will run together in the upcoming 9th of April parliamentary elections. According to their agreement, both Gantz and Lapid will serve, if elected, as Israel's Prime Minister for a rotation term of two years each, a move that polls predict will allow them, if election was held today, to surpass Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu and his longtime ruling Likud party. Furthermore, the move convinced another former IDF chief of staff, Gabi Ashkenazi, to join forces with Gantz and Lapid, making him the third former military chief to join the political centrist union. That is why reports of several other agreements by smaller alt-right-wing factions have been made to secure a parliamentary majority of potential allies for Netanyahu's political bloc after the elections. It is important to note further that while in previous elections, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu was viewed by the Israeli public as the most experienced man in politics on matters of defense and security, providing him with a significant edge on his political rivals, the new centrist union under the leadership of three former IDF chiefs of staff, two of whom were considered very popular within Israel society, poses a significant challenge to Netanyahu's so-called image of Mr. Security. That is why his main rival, Lieutenant General in Reserve Benny Gantz, has time and again emphasized in messages that were clearly directed to the Israeli public that he too will ensure Israel's security in the face of Iran's aggressive aspirations toward the Jewish state and the region. 
I'm standing shoulder to shoulder with Prime Minister Netanyahu in the fight against Iran's aggression. I'm certain he, that he will do the same when I hopefully become the Prime Minister of Israel. President Rouhani, on my watch, there will be no Chamberlain-like Munich agreement with the vicious regime. On my watch, there will be no appeasement. On my watch, Iran will not threaten Israel by taking over Syria, Lebanon, or Gaza Strip. Nor will it undermine pragmatic regimes in the Middle East. On my watch, Iran will not have nuclear weapons. Now to a related matter, Iranian Foreign Minister Muhammad Javad Zarif accused Israel of engaging in adventurism with regard to its military operations that are directed against Iranian forces in Syria, warning that he could not rule out the possibility of a military conflagration between the two countries. In an interview that was published by the German daily Süddeutsche Zeitung, the Islamic Republic's top diplomat reiterated that Iran's presence in Syria is at the invitation of the Damascus government, while Israel is in clear violation of international law when it uses both Syrian and Lebanese airspaces to attack Iranian installations in its war-torn neighbor. When the German daily asked the Iranian foreign minister whether he expected a military conflict between Iran and Israel, Zarif said that he did not, but stressed that no one can exclude the possibility. Meanwhile, in Iran, the Islamic Republic has launched a large-scale naval exercise dubbed Vilayat 97, which aims to see submarines, warships, helicopters and surveillance aircrafts participate in maritime war games. The commander of Iran's Navy, Rear Admiral Hussein Khanzadi, announced that the annual exercise has begun some two kilometers from the Strait of Hormuz and will continue up to 10 degrees north of the Indian Ocean. The Iranian Navy commander further stated that the maritime war games aim for training naval plans to deal with any external threats, displaying power, assessing the equipment, the level of preparedness and accountability of the Navy, and declaring readiness to achieve collective security in open waters. Now to New York, where Nikolai Mladenov, the United Nations Special Coordinator for Middle East Peace, warned the World Body Security Council that extremists were on the rise again and the risk of war continues to loom large. Addressing the UN Security Council in a televised statement from his headquarters in Jerusalem, Mladenov stressed that for Israelis and Palestinians to get back on track for a peaceful resolution of the decades-old conflict, the first thing that is required is leadership. Extremists are on the rise again, and the risk of war continues to loom large. For Israelis and Palestinians to get back on track for a peaceful resolution of the conflict, the first thing that is required is leadership. Leadership that believes peace is possible through negotiations. The special coordinator further warned that the militant buildup continues as the risk of ever more radical and extremist groups pushing both sides into war rose by the day. With the prospects of intra-Palestinian reconciliation dimming, the people of Gaza feel more and more left to their own devices with no representation, no relief and no way out. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and its region, please join our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov. We will see you again tomorrow at the same time.